What's up boys, welcome to the new series, how do I beat this? And today we're gonna be learning how to beat loads of different things. I'm not sure what yet. We're starting with a link flood into a hatch block. I will have all of the uh, things that we'll learn how to beat down in the description below. So if you wanna see certain things, if you don't wanna see certain things, you can skip and click on the time, uh, you know, that corresponds with whatever it is that we'll learn how to beat. And we'll start with uh, Killjoy who sent me a replay and said, hello, this is a common build in diamond and I really want to know how you must properly react. Thank you. So let's get into it. <clears throat> um, I'm, in all of these replays, I'm gonna be looking at the early game uh, as well as the, the thing itself, just to make sure there's no big early game errors so we can figure out everything properly. Now, our friend Kildra here scouts a hatchery first into what looks to be a hatch block. Now ideally you'd send your second probe down the moment you see the drone arrive. And then, yeah, this is so far this is actually good reactions by, uh, by Killjoy here, who right now, in my opinion, what you should do is you should add a cyber core, um, pull five workers, start a zealot, get a pylon, then get a gas and then get um, another probe add it to the mix you already have your nexus down don't chrono boost it oh, as he does it he as i said he does the chrono boost and pull five workers five workers together with a zealot should be able to deal with this um sufficiently you just get the cyber core over here so you can start tacking quickly after you build that that 23rd probe that he should have been building you get the gas and uh, you just get an adapt afterwards but you do need to pull five probes and then you should be capable of dealing with this in a proper way. Now, we can go on a bit to see is even though his initial response wasn't great, to see if there's more opportunities in which he possibly could have won. I really don't like two zealots in this case, but it, it's still possible. Ideally, you want to be getting adapts as quickly, um, both for scouting and for defense. It's very good to have adapts, of course. You want to wall off completely, so whether you do that with your tech or with something else doesn't matter too much. This is a hatchery that isn't doing anything, so he doesn't need to attack that. All he needs to do is just wall, whether Stargate, Robo, Forge, another gateway. You need to have a proper wall. Chrono Boost is adept, and I mean, he's, he's gonna be in a completely fine spot. Like this game is completely over in the advantage of Killjoy. As long as the links don't come in. Now the links do come in. Even in this case, he's still in a very good position where if you just continuously build units, he walls off, gets batteries, some kind of tech. Look how much money he's floating. Could have got oh this isn't complete either. Ah. Okay, it's just a really poor poor walling skill. So yeah, I ideally you you would have walled in, in some way. So I, I can maybe show real fast how I, I would have done it. Um but yeah, per perhaps just something hey, like this. Oh, here. what's that? Perhaps something like this would have been fine. So, because there's, you know, there's already a, a wall here. You can just want a single building, get a battery like this, get another battery like this. Always continue building probes and uh, you just produce units out of your two gateways and you should be completely fine. So that is the first, how do I beat this? How do I beat proxy hatch with a link flood? Solved. Congratulations, boys. Good work. Quickly, on to the next one. Just like that, we're back. Replay number two. We have um, Reagan, who I believe we've done an IO this one before, sent me an email saying, I got two replays PVZ. I would like to say around 5k MMR. Uh, it's about holding Zerg all in. My main question is the following. When I see Zerglings chase my first scouting probe, as usual, should my first adept stay at home and fight them, or just keep on going for a scout? In this mail, I send two replays where I send the adapt to the Zerg, despite Zergling chasing my probe in one and keep it at home in the other time. Both times I lose. I suppose I have to see the Aling coming with my probe since the adapt is too late, but it gets chased out by four to six links, which doesn't give me much intel. Then he tells me how much MMR he lost. So let's have a look at sec exactly at how you want to be doing that early game adapt movement when you're getting chased out by links. Of course, a very good question. Now, we have Reagan just doing a regular gate scout. All of that is fine. His opponent is opening with a hatchery first. Let's speed up this replay a bit. The build order looks tight. 20 Nexus, 20 Cyber Core. Now, this wall is a little tricky and he messed it up a bit, I have to admit, because this is not a single unit wall. Like, you'll, you'll be able to wall this off with a Stalker, but not with a Zealot. Links will be able to fit through. 
So not, not, a, not a perfect wall for sure. But that, of course, wasn't his question. It's just an observation I make on the side. Um, now, we do have the first links coming out. What did our friend scout? He scouted a complete lack of gas. And he saw that there was a, a drone in his main base. So he should be checking if there's a hatchery in the main or not. Or what, what that drone is doing, basically. That's it's a very big thing. Now, the moment you see six links like this. And they're running straight across the map. Keep your adapt at home. All right? Just keep your adapt at home. And what you do with your probe is you check whether more links are coming. Whether there's a third base over here or over here. And if you see two more links, then just keep your units at home. Yes, exactly. Get your Stargate tag. Get another gateway. Like if you see eight or ten links coming immediately, you should keep this one at home. Get another gateway to get the full wall. And you should be fine. This is your slow links. Um, he's going to get a road arm behind it, but you should be completely completely fine with this. I mean, in this case, now you're going to lose basically a free pylon. Um, you still don't get the scouting information, which you could have gotten with the probe already. Reagan does lose an adept in a bit of a silly way, as you saw. Now, imagine that he would have done all of that. And then you can say, well, but, but Kevin, what, what about this hatchery? There also was a hatchery in his base. Once again, just like last game, he could have either started the zealot early on, or he could have just pulled seven or eight probes and just right click on the hatchery. That's also fine. Both of these things are completely fine to do. Um, now, of course, you want to get a, an oracle out as quickly as possible, or in case you knew there was a hatchery here, perhaps even a void ray would have been completely fine. But he just lost all of his units to the links. He, he probably never even realized there was a hatchery in his main base. So, um, yeah, the thing you want to do is just full wall, check with your probe whether more links are coming or not, and see if there's a third base. No third base is a very big tell that there's an all incoming majority of the time, especially if you're playing in the higher leagues, the platinum, the diamonds, that kind of stuff. All right, quick problem solved again. On to the next one. Whoa. Welcome back. Of course, we still have another Reagan game. He sent me two replays, so we're going to have a look at that. Um, it's the same issue. He asked, hey, what, what, what do I do? This time he said he left his adept at home, so I'm curious to see how he will lose this time. His opponent is opening a Roach Warren as a follow-up and speed. Now, if the, the, the probe is being chased, you can just clear the links just like this. This is perfect. And then what you could do is you can go back with the probe to scout if there's a third base and to see what else is coming with that probe. You don't need to send that probe back. There's an adapt here to defend it. And that's exactly um, the opposite of what Reagan is doing, who once again sends his probe back home, doesn't know there's only two bases, doesn't know about the Roach Warren either, most likely is just gonna lose to uh, some kind of Roach all in. Two more links uh, on the way, and here come the Roaches. He'll see it pretty late. Now, I still think he's in a playable position here. He has an, uh, an Oracle on the way. He sees a couple of roaches. What you're supposed to do here, in my opinion, is you cancel the oracle, you start a void ray, you chrono boost it with the chrono boost that he has, you full wall this area, and you full wall this area as well, and you start two batteries, and you start unit production. And you start cutting probes as well, like all of these probes will be getting cut. You don't continue probe production. In that case, you'll have a void ray, you'll have three gate units hopefully if this one survives which i doubt it will and ideally you see it a bit earlier of course because you have that probe over there now battery is here you should wall this with a pylon because batteries build a lot slower and they have less hp pylon takes 18 seconds to build a battery 29 seconds this is why whenever you're walling small areas you wall with a pylon and if you're walling bigger areas you do it with a cyber core because the cyber core has more hp and builds faster than a gateway as well now, another thing that you shouldn't forget reagan is 2gg as well i understand you're frustrated but it doesn't help your mindset if you leave games without gg especially against all in so try to work on that as well all right another problem solved next replay let's go Hey Harstem, Diamond 2 player here, wondering how to beat the style in which the Terrans harass all three bases at the same time. I know my map vision is atrocious and my minimap awareness is non-existent, so I was wondering if you had any tips on approving these things. 
I was thinking maybe camera hotkeys might be worth learning. Additionally, how do I practice improving my reaction time to these drops and attacks? Thanks so much. Keep up the amazing work. 07. All right, um, mister. Let's have a look at that. It's a longer replay as well. And Hioma is our uh, the subject we care about, and he has struggles with harassment. Now, first of all, learning camera hotkeys is very important, and I also think very, very useful. The annoying thing about the camera hotkey is that by default, they're in a really stupid location. So if you go into your hotkeys menu, you see the standard location for uh, for the camera hotkeys. If you go to uh, global camera, you see that it is control F5, control F6, control F7, control F8. And then the corresponding keys are F5, F6, F7, F8. And if you go further, you have to do some real difficult work. It's almost like uh, playing piano. Now, we, I'm no piano player and I don't want to be. So I changed that. If you see my global keys is I have location one with control F1, location two, F2, etc., etc. The main thing that you need to change then is I believe uh, idle worker, which I moved to spacebar and I moved some other things around. But I think camera hotkeys, especially if you're platinum, if you're diamond, these higher leaks, they become extremely important. So I definitely suggest getting them in there, just practice with them. And that will already help with a lot of things, responding to drops, um, transferring workers from one base to the next. These are things that really will help. So also dealing with that harass will be easier already with that. But of course, there's other tricks that you can use. Um, that don't necessarily include camera hotkeys. Now let's have a quick look at the opening. I'm very happy with uh, the way the boys have been opening so far. They've been showing uh, a good understanding on how to deal with things. Now, this is actually interesting. We get two things in one. We get an eBay block and we have uh, apparently a lot of harass. Now the way you wanna deal with an eBay block is indeed the score before Nexus, but you also wanna get a zealot and you want to get a pylon on the low ground, otherwise you get supply blocked. And it's also very important, you don't get your gas stolen actually. So the moment you see it, you start a zealot, um, get one probe down there to start attacking the SUV, make sure he can build it, get a, a cyber core, a pylon, and then once the, the eBay fi uh, falls down, you start your nexus, ideally before the Reaper arrives, because if this eBay is still up, by the time the Reaper arrives, you're gonna be in a lot of trouble and it's just gonna come very late. now. Something very common, of course, is that Protoss players do get supply blocked on 2323 because they're just not used to being eBay blocked and that you need to get the pylon a little bit earlier. You're building a zealot before any other unit. So some uh, some quick info there. But overall, pretty decent response here by Hayoma, who uh, yeah, has a pr pretty nice early game. Let's speed this up a bit. Let's see how he's dealing with stuff. Nah, all looks solid. Ideally, you have a pile on the low ground, of course. Makes it easier for um, batteries um, to be built and for quick warp-ins onto your natural, of course. Usually, your pylon should have some kind of goal, and this pylon has no goal. The only goal this pylon has is being useless. You could either use it as a spotter, for example, over here, or you could block off an area like he's doing here with his third pylon. All of these are are pylons that have a use, but this pylon is completely useless, which is annoying. The only use this pylon have, has actually is that he can build buildings very easily here. There's a lot of space around it. So perhaps uh, useful as a third or a fourth pylon, but not as a second pylon. Second pylon should be on the low ground, really. Um, Follow it up with Blink. Some stalkers being built as well. Barely missed the Reaper. That's rough, that's rough, but it's truly the way of the world. Now, the way that you want to be dealing with any kind of drop is that if you would give any top player half a second to respond to a drop, they're not gonna be able to do it either. So the real way to deal with drops is just to see them coming. Like you also, if you have insanely good game sense, you can kind of feel them come sometimes, but unless you're a top 15 GM or top 16 GM, I would not recommend the game sense method because First of all, it's not as accurate as seeing stuff by scouting and having uh, units spread out or pylons or observers spread out. And also it's extremely difficult to feel it. Like you need to be very aware of timings of your opponent. So you know how many units your opponent can have and when. Now, <clears throat> important thing is to think of a map. Um, it's like, how, what are the important parts to cover with vision?
what are the important parts of the maps to cover with vision you might think well the important parts are basically everything against Terran. you want to have a circle of vision around your your area because you want to be able to see stuff and especially the corners are important of course like you this can be achieved by either having a pylon here maybe a, a zealot over here a unit here an observer over here an observer here really trying to get that 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 circle of vision around you which will allow you to respond to these drops in a in a way quicker way than you know just seeing it last second and being oh i need to respond right now now this is an observer which you see a lot on lower levels and you might think hey that's a really good observer you're covering this path and uh you know whenever he attacks you get like a two second warning sure that's great but this could have been achieved by a zealot as well really easily what you want to be doing with the observers you want to go to the spots spot the spots which aren't as easily checked by a zealot so i'm thinking this spot like it's a lot further away you can't really pull that zealot back ever maybe this spot as well or like your opponents you know the front of your opponent otherwise your zealot will just die so use your observers in spots where you can't realistically put a pylon or send a unit or it's difficult so like in a dead space is also possible and this map doesn't really have a lot of dead space but that's something you should keep in mind and definitely i'd always suggest have a pylon on this edge at your third base have an observer here on this edge cover your two edges first these are the most important things units will always come from there your army is in the middle anyway if he comes from here you'll be able to stop it always cover the edges first <clears throat> now moving forward you see what the Terran is doing this is the the trick like multitasking is way easier than it is to defend multitasking because all of these things are just gonna get queued up you see he's queuing this up then he's gonna control this and he queued this up as well so the only thing he's really doing is controlling the widow mines and all three things hit at the same time for the protos the problem here is that the protos was completely unaware no vision at the top no vision here no vision in this area liberator comes as a surprise so the whole army goes to the liberator the mines come as a surprise Well, so there's still some units there there's nothing to deal with this there's really nothing to deal with this either should have pulled away the probes here but he was busy with the liberator that was you know doing some work here just like that 18 workers gone and now all of a sudden you have an extremely difficult game he's lucky that during all of this the Terran completely forgot the macro and is floating a solid thousand minerals but otherwise this game would already be over most likely I mean if you lose what 18 workers it comes very hard now <clears throat> what the, the, the question was how do I respond faster it's responding faster will just come with practice like looking at the mini map you can uh, some of I, I know some of my friends what they've done for example is they they play with a metronome with a for example 20 or 15 bpm um, so that's once every three or once every four seconds and um, every time you hear the tick, tick, you just force yourself to look at the minimap to see if everything has happened and that can build a very strong habit of looking at the minimap now, ideally you'd be you know checking maybe a little bit more than once every four seconds but it's a, it's a good start at least to to do um, I also want to show you guys how no, no, I, I think the, the rest of this game isn't too interesting we've already covered that I just want to show you guys real fast how I would have spread out my stuff so if, if I was in this game how I would have made sure that I had vision everywhere and with how little things I would have been able to do that so I would have built a pylon over there I would have put this observer over here I would have put this observer over here now I would have put a stalker or well, actually I always do zealots I put a zealot here I put a zealot here and <clears throat> so this area is covered this area is covered this area is covered this area is covered and we have this covered and you see just like that without really doing anything I have a complete circle of vision around me giving me at least three or four seconds to respond to any threat that will come isn't that beautiful just like that it took me two seconds to do now, of course I might be a little bit faster than Hyoma but this is really what you always want to have you want to have that vision and if the zealot dies that's okay you can just send a new one most of the time you're gonna have enough money zealots are replaceable it's much better to replace this zealot than have to replace this base and all its probes 
Same with this pylon. Sure, you can always replace this pylon, but if a liberator comes in and kills two workers, that's already worth way more than that pylon. It's just so important to be aware of what your opponent is doing with his units. I hope that helps. And uh, let's head into the next one. How do I beat this? PVT against Battlecruiser Harass with Transition. I'm a Diamond 3 Protoss player and attached is something I have a lot of trouble with against Terran. The opponent will Battlecruiser Harass. As I'm trying to deal with it with Blink Stalkers, they're building Tors. By the time they move out with the Tors, my Stalkers are useless. I understand that a better counter to Battlecruisers are Void Rays. I'm not sure who told you that, but that's not true. And I try to get them out, but even though I believe I was in an economic lead against my opponent for most of the game, this failed to happen. If they're making this transition during a time when I'm struggling to deal with their harass, how can I possibly also transition to Immortals to deal with this Tors? In the beginning you'll see him do a proxy all in, but I don't think that's relevant to the game because I held it and was generally ahead. So let's have a look at this. Uh, Battlecruiser harass into Mastor. So some form of mech, I guess. Um, first of all, so some general rules against mech are that a composition that is good is Zealots, Archons, Immortals are all very useful. Um, especially with charge. And on, on top of that, the way you engage is important. Try to engage in open areas, come from two or even three sides if possible. Um, base traits are generally quite good against mech once they move out. You can clear their third base or their fourth base relatively easily as mech units in small numbers don't deal very well with charge lots. Mm. Now we have our opponent opening with a Marauder push of some sort. Ah, okay, this is cool. This is a Marine Marauder push. Now, of course, our our hero Iolian Harp will be spotting that there's a barracks here and there's no CC yet, so I believe he should get a battery. He doesn't get a battery and he'll... Pro oh. Yikes. This is not a good response. So, generally, the rule is... Let's actually head back. It's, it's interesting that a lot of people... You know, they send me the replay and they see a problem, but I see many different problems already at the start. If there's no command center built yet, after 150, you build a battery at home, all right? That's a rule that you can use at any league. And people will say, yeah, but at my league, there's never a, a, a CC at 150 in the game. It's like, that's completely fine. If they don't have the CC at 150, it's okay to build a battery because you're already ahead just because they don't have their command center. So this counts for every single league. Now, moving on. Let's see how uh, Iolian Harp helps himself out of his uh, out of this pickle, this difficult situation. Gets a lot of batteries, which make it difficult. Gets three gateways. Now, his opponent pushes on, but um, if, if you're a, a good Terran players will play this, or top Terran players will play this, they'll realize after canceling the Nexus that they're in a fine spot. They just get a CC, a bunker, start tacking into factory, and you're completely dead as a Protoss. With your three gates, your extra batteries. And that's the reason why I say you need a battery on the low ground. You need to be able to defend this on the low ground. Uh, it's nice that he's capable of doing this, and it's nice that it's, wor that it's working. Um, but it's just because of the poor decision-making by the Terran, not due to the credit of Iolian's harp response. The response I uh, formulated earlier is a better response. Where you just get a battery on the low ground. And you should be able to hold um, with a small probe pool. Four or five probes, two stalkers, should be completely fine. Thumbs up for that, boys. No worries. So we have uh, Iolian harp moving down a bit. We're just gonna speed it up so we get to the, to the important parts. Now, Iolian harp said he was very far ahead, which I'm not entirely sure on. He's ahead in supply but he's definitely down in income at the moment so unless he managed to kill a lot of SCVs I don't actually like his position too much like it's it's okay but if he doesn't kill his opponent that doesn't matter I mean he's just down in income the tech of the Terran is way way further ahead and actually yeah I, I don't like the position as well there's a I thought there was a battle cruiser out already no it was just a Viking okay so yeah I'm, I'm not a massive fan of this position of uh Iolian Harp, who will be going into a Twilight Council, most likely Blink. We're speeding it up again until we get to the relevant part. Uh, I'm not a massive fan of this prism timing. Don't forget, he's pretty blind as to what is happening. Much rather would have seen an Observer first. Observers built very quickly. I mean, plenty of gas in the bank, so that's not a thing to worry about. We'll give you that extra info that there is a battle cruiser on the way, which is kind of important. Now, if you see a battle cruiser. Something that's actually very helpful is getting a battery in each mineral line. Um, 
better cruisers have kind of high DPS, but battery also has very high healing and you probably won't lose a lot. Four or five stalkers with a battery should be fine. Right now what's gonna happen, you're just gonna lose five, six workers um, immediately and you will never be able to kill this battle cruiser, which you never should be able to kill a battle cruiser, but um, at least you wouldn't get those six worker kills for the Terran, which at this point the game actually is very much in favor of the Terran. Worker count is even, there's three orbitals done. So Iolian Harp actually kind of misread the situation, which is also very common. He's like, hey, Kevin, I was ahead here. Uh, how did I lose this? But actually, he was behind, and then he lost. So then, all of a sudden, you you have to look at different things. It's like, hey, why was I behind? Why was I so far behind that it was very difficult for me to to win at that point? Now, we do, of course, see almost no worker production. It's because Iolian Harp isn't really scouting properly. Once again, no observer, not a single hallucination. He isn't even aware if there's uh, a command center down here yet. He only thinks he's playing against two base at this point. Well, actually, he's playing against three base. And he hasn't built a probe in about two minutes, which is always very important to do, of course. Um, you also, another nice thing is to check if he continues battlecruiser production or if he stays with just a single battlecruiser. Um, these are all things that, that of course, you want to know. Now, Ioli and Harp links forward. Thinks he might be able to kill these battlecruisers, but instead is walking into a lot of tank fire. Actually, he does get a good lift off, so... I'm starting to like his position more and more. I'm starting to get a bit curious how he loses. this. I think I have a theory. It's just that he's so focused on killing his opponent, whom a, a thing you hear very often is that people say, I deserve to win the game at a certain point. You'll hear this at all levels. It's like, I killed X, so now I should be able to kill him. But a lot of the time, the advantage isn't necessarily in, hey, I'm going to be able to kill him now, but the advantage could be in being able to take a third base or even just as simple as having the freedom to probe up both of your bases and then get a third base and get your get get your forges up like attacking into a tanked up battle cruiser rushing terran might sound very cool but you know what also sounds cool getting 200 supply at like the 10 minute mark because you have four bases and getting double forges like this all is really cool and aggressive but he hasn't built a single single worker in so long there's no third base up yet don't forget there's still three orbitals so at this point obviously the income is a lot better for Ioli and Harp but there's no need for him to be attacking into this he's playing against a one base Terran or a one base mining Terran why in the hell would he do this it's not necessary just take your third base build more probes get your upgrades going and a lot of the time people will play like this and then be like after their attack fails, that's when they start doing the things that they know they should have been doing already. You'll see the upgrade start, you see pro production start again, third base going down. This is extremely common. You want to anticipate on what's going to happen. You don't want to, uh, after you lose a fight, be like, damn, I wish I had plus one done now. No, you do that during your push or, or while something is happening. Like Just try to think ahead a little bit. Get that third base up. Still in a good position though, Ioli and Harp. Um, if he would just get a couple of upgrades. Not a fan of the Stargates. You can deal with this completely fine if you have vision. Once again, no real vision. So difficult to spot the battle cruisers. Pylon here, Observer here, Unit here, Unit here. And you got your, your ring of vision established once again. This is actually some, some tense movement. Oh, that's impressive. I'm, I'm slightly impressed. Um... <coughs> And actually, at this point, all Ioli and Harp needs to do is get Charge, get Archons, and I mean, there's really nothing here for the Terran. What does the army of the Terran consist of? It's three tanks, two are in the main base, and it's a single battle cruiser. Imagine right now if you had three Archons here and five Zealots with Charge. This game is completely over, just like that. But once again... Our Protoss player has absolutely no clue because he is he's not aware exactly of what's happening. He doesn't have an observer. He isn't scouting with hallucinations. So he doesn't know that he has a big supply lead and could kill at this point. I mean, whenever a Terran takes a third, especially with mech, it's a time they'll be very exposed. It's a time you can pounce on them. At least it's a time to check if you can pounce on them. And I think in this case, if he would have had charge and Templar archives or just even Dark Templars archons, he would have been completely fine. Two tanks. 
Even with these stalkers, I think if he blinks forward, he's kind of fine. Void Ray is a bad call, by the way. It's not needed against Battle Cruiser. It's actually kind of bad because they get one shot by Yamato Cannon. Um, Fort Base should be taken as soon as possible as well. And really just, just charge, charge Archon. Stalkers are absolutely awful against tanks. They take extra damage because they're armored. Uh, they don't even deal well with Hellions either. They don't deal well with Tors. They deal well with absolutely nothing. And I mean, Void Rays are cool, but... Actually, no, they're not cool. They're absolutely clueless as well against Terran. So we're just missing the right composition here for the pros player. So let's just uh, speed it up a bit. But with this composition, you're never going to be able to win. Blinks into tanks, blinks into battle cruisers, and we'll just bleed out stalkers. And then realize his army is not set up with this. Instead, he should have had a charge archon, perhaps some immortal army. And of course, you need some stalkers to deal with the battle cruisers. But if there's only two battle cruisers, 10, 11 stalkers is plenty, especially if you know where they're gonna come. You don't need to split them up then. You can just keep them in one group, just like that. Another problem fixed. All right, boys, this was the first episode of How Do I Beat This? I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any feedback, feel free to leave it down in the comments, as of course it's new. It's new for me as well. Is it going too fast? Is it going too slow? Is the episode too long? Do you not want to see my face? You don't like my turtleneck? These are all fair criticisms i will listen to them um yeah and also if you do did enjoy it please feel free to subscribe and leave a thumbs up all right love you all and see you boys and girls next time bye bye